prophetic proclamations and apostolic decrees. What do they mean? Webster's defines a proclamation as a public official announcement to indicate or make known openly. It also defines a decree as a formal and authoritative order having the force of a law. One of the eternal purposes of God by which events are foreordained. Hebrew definition for the word decree means a royal edict or something declared as a law by a king. On numerous occasions in the books of Ezra, Esther, Nehemiah, Daniel, we are told of the release of royal decrees which had the power to change the course of cities and nations. When a proclamation was released or announced, the town crier, <laughs> I love that, there's a person they used to call the town crier. Reminds me of Patrick Henry. Give me liberty or give me death. Huh. Right on this memorial weekend. Thank God for all the soldiers. Thank God for the soldiers of the past. Men and women, thank God for those in the present. Thank God for those in the future who will stand on our ships, fly in our planes, uh, stand in the uh, trenches uh, with armors uh, and, and armor on and fight a fight of freedom for us. Thank God for every one of them. But all of a sudden it said that a proclamation was released and announced by the town crier or the herald would shout the news throughout the city of the streets. A decree was written and posted on the city gates and in the important town centers for everybody to see. Today, we posted on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, cable TV that our God is in charge and he says it's a day to open up. The decree had the effect of changing the normal course of life. It indicated that regardless of what life was like before a shift had taken place and things were commanded to change, whenever a decree was made, it said that there was a shifting that happened and that there was command of change to come. Ecclesiastes 8, 4 and 5, where the word of the king is, there is power. And who may say to him, what are you doing? as the media might try. He who keeps his command will experience nothing harmful. And wise man's heart discern both time and judgment. Did you hear what I said to you? He who keeps his command, the command of the king will experience nothing harmful. In the name of Jesus, uh, when the commander in chief says, uh, if he can send our kids to war, then he can send our people back to the house of God. If he can put you, David, out in the front lines uh, of some unforsaken land, he surely can say, it's time for God's people to be unshackled and come back together and worship the living God. If you're hearing me today, I pray that you're convicted by the truth that's in the scriptures. Read it, it's on the board there. Ezra chapter one, verse one. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he made a proclamation throughout all of his kingdom and he put it in writing. You hear that? Yes. It says that this King Cyrus rose up and the Spirit of God stirred him up. Read with me in the New King James. Rest of this needs to be New King James, uh, Angela. Go to Isaiah 45. Let's read a little bit there. I'm going right through this this morning. I'm going to be done so fast you'll be amazed. I've got four pages of notes and I'm on the end of page three so you can be hopeful. <laughs> those that are sitting at home, stop eating that snack and listen to the word of the Lord. And next time you come to my service, don't you dread. I was afraid somebody would come in here and forget and have their pajamas on. Thank God. Isaiah 45, verse 1 through 3. 
New King James, look at it. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have held. To subdue nations, his mission was to subdue nations before him and loose the armor of kings to open before him the double doors so that the gates will not be shut. I will go before you, he says, and make the crooked places. Uh, Cyrus, I'm going to make the crooked place. Your crooked places, Cyrus, are going to get straightened up. And I will break in pieces the gates of bronze that's man, that's governments of man. And he said, I'll cut the bars of iron in two. Oh, this is so powerful. I will give you the treasures of darkness, hidden riches in secret places that you may know that I, the Lord, who call you by your name in the God of Israel. But get this. Isaiah said that 150 years before he was born. Cyrus is not even born. And Isaiah is prophesying this is what he's going to do. Tell me that God doesn't see the beginning from the end. That God is not omnipotent, all-knowing, all-powerful God who can be able to tell us what's coming and what's getting in front of us, not only where we're at. Cyrus was a man who came along at an appointed time, at a time of divine favor to bring the people of God out of bondage and out of captivity into a new freedom, full of purpose and productivity and and prosperity. They came out of Babylon with prosperity. You see, you got to know what this is. Cyrus was was the head of Persia, and he went in and conquered Babylon, and that's how come Babylon let go of the children of God. They let the Israelites go back to Jerusalem. He set them free. He opened the door. He broke the bondage so that they could be free. Oh, in a minute, I'm going to show you. Jesus is a type of Cyrus. Cyrus was a type of Jesus. If Jesus sets us free from our captivity of sin, then my God, he also can set us free from the prison of a culture of a system called Babylon. Now, this is 14, I mean, this is 150 years ago before this happened. History speaks of him as called the Cyrus the Great. He conquered, you remember what it said in the beginning? that he would subdue nations. There it is in front of you. How many? 14 different nations. He captured cities. He subdued kingdoms. And the most famous one that he took was Babylon. Think about this. Cyrus conquered Babylon. You say, what does Babylon have to do with me? It's controlling your university. Those of you that go to those places need to understand they're not being run by just men. They're run by demonic forces that influence them and cause them to put a system into the world. And that worldly system is what we bow to every day. It's in our economic system. It's in our political system. Look at the corruption in the politics. How can a man who's the vice president you know, be running for office and his hand is in in Ukraine and, and his son and then in China, a million, a billion dollars he got there and, and all of these other events. How can all that go on? And everybody just looks and turns their heads. You better have appointment of God in this day to run a nation that's destined to change the earth. Because, listen to me, in my lifetime, I witnessed something that is mind-boggling. When Donald Trump, uh, over a year ago, decreed that Jerusalem was the capital of Israel again. Mark it down. That was a decree that changed and shifted the whole Middle East. Everything shifted biblically. Everything prophetically shifted by one decree. 
You better have, you better have a God mandate if you're going to run a nation in this day. Look at this. Babylon was the most famous that he conquered. This is where the, he decreed that Israel was free to go back to Jerusalem. What were they free to do? They were free. Jeremiah, come on. I mean, you see it. And, and, and Nehemiah, they were free to go build the wall and build the temple. Come on. They were free to go back and build the house of God. Now, Cyrus did this by the word of the Lord from the prophet Isaiah. As I said, 150 years. It sounds like the Josiah. Josiah finds his name he was spoken of hundreds of years before he found his name in the scrolls when they were rebuilding the temple. Cyrus uh, uh, is a guy that rebuilt uh, uh, the nations uh, and, and Josiah is the one who rebuilt the church. We need both of those leaderships today. We need those that are going to rebuild the church uh, and bring the church into the 21st century as a prophetic voice apostolically led that is doing something to change culture. But we need a government leader like Cyrus. In the prophecy, he did not only, was not only responsible for releasing the Jewish people from Babylon's captivity, but he also issued a decree which enabled them to return to Jerusalem, as I said, to rebuild the house of God, in which we can see that in Ezra and Nehemiah, the whole story is there, that they rebuilt the walls and they rebuilt the old foundations. Not only, not only released, he didn't only release them from bondage, he sent much of the conquered Babylonian wealth with them to build, to aid in the building uh, of the house and the walls and the house of God. They came out of Egypt, saints, and they took the gold and the silver. God let them come out of Babylon with wealth. Don't you understand what God is saying to us, that the wealth is in the secret places and God is letting prophets begin to see where it's at. It's getting exposed. How of you know, we're finding money coming back to the United States in an astronomical means because China has ripped us off for years. Now the billions they took are coming back home and they're coming back to America. And just like the UN was taking money and just like the, uh, the, the people over in Europe were taking money. Now they're paying their own bill. They're paying the bill. The money's coming back. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. You say, well, I'm not getting any of that money. You need to be quiet a minute. Most of you got money in the recent days that you never expected to get. Hello, come on, need to tell the truth. Money came in all of a sudden because the wealth of that money that's enlarged, it's coming back. We have an Osiris that says, give that money back to the people. Well, yes, yeah, some sinners got that money, but that's all right, you'll see. They don't keep it. He not only released them now out of captivity, but he released them with wealth. And you got to see this. Uh, Proverbs 13, 22, the wealth of the wicked finds its way to the hands of the righteous for whom he laid it up for. And Joseph came out. He had money. Esther came out. She became the queen. Moses came out. He came out with all the money of Egypt. Come on, saints. And God is looking for leaders, like I said in 1 Kings 13, and verse 2, like Josiah, Isaiah 45, 1, like Cyrus. One restored the church, the other restored nations. We need new leadership, both in the nations, and we need new leadership in the church. I'm, I'm embarrassed when the church is hiding. Come out of hiding. Come out of hiding. Yeah, let me tell you something. When I go to war, David, when you go to war, you want people that you can count on, don't you? You want the soldier beside you that you can count on. You want your commanding officers not ready to run. Am I right? Many of you that were here in military, there's a whole different attitude when you go to war and they say, go out there and get them. Go ahead and get them. 
Remember me in prayer. How many of you hear me? I'm disappointed in people who are afraid to stand for Jesus. Say, well, I don't have to stand for Jesus. People know I love Jesus. Well, keep going. Because there was a time already in our history that people denied the Lord when they needed to stand for the Lord. And some of you here today, I'm proud of you. Not that I'm not proud of every other person, but I'm telling you, some of us need to shake ourselves and decide it's no longer time to hide. It's time to stand up. Stand for something. I can't see. I have a little bit of a difference because I came out of jail. I came out of hell. I came out of all that stuff. And for me to cower back, it's been bothering me to death. It bothers me to be a coward. I'm going to, I'm going to battle with my boots on. Hello? Let me take you a little further and we'll stop. Cyrus was the type of Christ. And, and, and he is seen as a type of the church as well. Let me show you these two points and then that's it. Cyrus, this great king that Isaiah prophesies about, he is a type of Christ and he's a type. Now, the scripture is full of types, shadows, patterns, symbols, uh, signs. We've all been talking about it before and you understand that. Psalm 1 verse 3, a righteous man is like a tree planted by the water. Doesn't mean the righteous man has roots uh, growing out of his feet. It is talking about something else. It's talking about, uh, instead, it's a picture of what God wants us to see about a righteous man. He, he has stability, fruitfulness, and endurance, which are the rewards of those who walk uprightly. So when it says, a scripture says, that the righteous are like a tree. Jesus used it over and over and over. He said, the kingdom of God is like. And he gave us an example. We need to see he's pointing to a type, to a shadow, to help us realize it in the natural so we can experience it in the spiritual. So a righteous man is one that's stable, fruitful, and endurance like a tree. You remember Malachi, uh, Malachi or Ma Melchizedek, I'm sorry, Melchizedek. He was a type of Christ. Hebrews chapter 7 tells us, verse 15, 17 tells us that uh, 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 Malachi was a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. And these types and shadows help us see the unseen by the seen natural world. Cyrus was a type of Christ, and here's what he was. He was referred to as a deliverer, delivering the Jews out of captivity as Jesus delivers us out of sin. So when you see Cyrus, he's a type of a deliverer. He's a type of Christ. I had a woman here. Uh, she prophesied to me that I had the spirit of Cyrus on me years ago. And, and we need to understand people that carry that anointing. I believe the church can carry that. That means you're a deliverer. Do you understand? You, you want to get people. That's why we have a girl's home. That's why we do these things we do to reach other people. It's because we're called to bring people out of darkness, to bring people out of captivity, not help people stay in it. Too many churches today are, are, are caught up in pontificating great elegance of uh, words, uh, and all of a sudden uh, they're leaving people more confused than when they came in. We need to bring people in and let the gospel cause people to be liberated, set free, and loosed to, to be all that God wants them to be. Amen. Huh. Oh, are you listening to me today? Uh, he was a type of Christ. He was a deliverer. Ephesians 4, 8, Jesus' life, death, and resurrection brought complete deliverance from the bondage as he led captivity captive. That's what it says. He led captivity captive. He gave gifts to men. God was showing us Jesus and Cyrus. Cyrus was a type of Jesus who was coming. He's a type of the Messiah. He's a type of the anointed one. Isaiah 45, 1, the Lord called Cyrus his anointed one. The one who delivers out of captivity. And, 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 and you got to get this. The anointed, the word for anointed means the Messiah in the Hebrew. 
When you see the anointed word in Hebrew, it is the Hebrew word for Messiah. So Cyrus is a type of the Messiah. Is he Jesus? No, no more than a man is a tree when he says he has a like righteousness, like the trees of righteousness. He's not a tree. He's a man. But it's an illustration of his character. Are you getting it? Isaiah 44, 28, the first place that Cyrus is even mentioned. He says, he's my shepherd. Huh. Isaiah, Isaiah 44, 28 says, and he, uh, who says of Cyrus, he is my shepherd. My, my, my. He is mentioned as a shepherd. He's one who leads and protects. Have you know, you can tell that this Cyrus that we have today who leads a nation he always wants to make sure we're protected. Amen. Come on. Amen. Even to his own demise. You say, oh, you're up here talking about the President Trump. And what about all of his rottenness? What about your rottenness? God called this man. That's what I'm telling you. I'm not hiding this thing. I'm not going to apologize for this thing. There's no other evidence but that God would cause a man to come up and say to the UN, protect the church around the world. First time it was ever heard. And then he comes to the pulpit in America and says, let the church be the church. Let the church be free. We don't need less prayer. We need more prayer. You didn't hear Obama say that. I touched the holy grail. You didn't hear Bush say that. You didn't hear any of them say that. You see, so I'm here today. I'm letting the cat out of the bag. Thank you for watching Rock City Church Online. We pray this message strengthens and encourages you to be all God has called you to be. You can support Rock City Church by giving online through the links in the description or by visiting our giving page at giver.cc. Join us for our next live stream on Thursdays at 7 p.m. and Sundays at 1030 a.m. And remember, our prayer room and prayer line are always available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. For prayer, call our 24-hour prayer line at 410-882-2689.